Every year there is something new and exciting added to ZBrush, and the software just keeps growing and growing. There's a lot in this program, and if it's the first time that you're looking at it, it can be a little overwhelming, which is why I created my How To ZBrush course, which you can find linked below. It's understandable that you'd most likely miss out on a feature here or there, especially if it's been replaced by something better or it's not really all that useful anymore. And in this video, we're going to look at five of those tools in ZBrush. See if you know them all. Number five, the magnifying glass. I used to work in an office whose team prided itself on its ability to sculpt and also perform harmless pranks on one another. Whenever my neighbor would get up to leave his desk, I would very sneakily walk over, sit down, and press Shift M on his keyboard, and then slink away like nothing ever happened. When he would come back, he would always be super confused as what was going on, and I would just sneakily laugh over by my desk pretending like I had no idea. He actually thought that it was a bug for the longest time until one day I felt so bad for him, I had to eventually spill the beans. Why does this tool exist? I would have to guess as an accessibility option, which is pretty awesome, but I don't really know anybody that actually uses it. You can find the settings for this tool under Preferences Magnifying Glass. And there are a bunch of different options that you can play around with. What I would do to my old coworker is turn down the shadow and frame sliders to zero so that it looked like it was hardly there. And I had to be a little subtle, you know, I couldn't just smack him in the face with it. I had to make him think it might actually be a bug or <laughs> something else that was wrong. You know, I'm not really proud that I did this, but I am kind of glad that I did. Number four, camera rotation. In ZBrush, there are the three standard forms of moving your camera. Much like any other 3D application, there are hotkeys associated with all of those, of course, as well as three buttons on the right side of your screen that you can use to pan, zoom, and rotate your model. But there is actually a secret fourth option that allows you to rotate your 3D model in a completely new way. You can do this by holding the shift key, right click and hold down that button, and then let go of shift. This will twist your 3D model around the axis your camera is facing. If you want something a little more specific, you can also do this function with the transpose line. Draw out your transpose line, hold down the control key, and click the outer white circle. There are a ton more hidden features associated with the transpose line, and I'll add a link if you want to check out the rest of them. Now, I don't really use this feature too much. It's not really necessary because you can achieve the same results pretty closely with the standard movement options, which is honestly how most of this stuff ends up being forgotten. Something new comes along, or it's just too much of a hassle to use that feature. And then it gets to sit, collect dust, and be forgotten by everybody. Well, except for us. Number three. F History Movies. I love recording time lapses in ZBrush, and there are a ton of different options that you can play with. But one that I discovered a long time ago that I still use to this day is the F History button. This button will play through your undos and record a time lapse based on the sculpting that you've already done. This is a great option if you don't want to record while you're making the initial sculpt. It also typically ends up looking a lot better and doesn't build up a huge file that will inevitably crash ZBrush. If you want to experiment with recording time lapses using the movie menu, make sure you go into your document settings first. You can change the size of your document to something more standard for a video. I like to use 1920 by 1080p. That's pretty standard high def. Set your movie settings to a large document and then change your overlay and title image sliders all to zero. That will get you started so that you can actually record something. But like I said, there are quite a few other modifiers in here to play around with. And if you'd like to learn more about recording time lapses in ZBrush, I'll share a link to a tutorial that you can check out. Number two, sketching in ZBrush. There are a lot of misconceptions about how ZBrush works. The backbone of the software was originally meant as a 2.5D painting application. But all you need to know is that your work is a full 3D model at all times. But for some odd reason, the old sketching tools still exist in ZBrush. I have no idea why, nor do I know anyone that uses these features, pretty much ever, but yet they still exist as a feature. This is what is happening if you've ever accidentally dropped a model to your canvas or gone out of edit mode. God forbid you ever travel into that desolate wasteland. If you've ever clicked on your tool icon and wondered what all of these options are in the bottom section here, well, these are all the tools used for sketching and painting. There are a lot of tools to play around with, but if you are really wanting to get into digital painting, I would maybe recommend something a little more robust like Photoshop. 
Honestly, the feature is still pretty fun to play around with, but if you want to get something a little more useful for translating to a sculpt later on, I recommend painting on a plane of geometry. Then when you are finished, you can delete what you don't want or extract what you do and use that piece of geometry as a silhouette or proportional guide for your sculpt. There are of course better ways to do this, but hey, if you want to paint in ZBrush, I'm not going to stop you. Number one, Notepad. This one kind of blew my mind when I first saw it, I'm not going to lie. I can't imagine using this feature for any reason at all. You can find this tool under Z Plugin, Miscellaneous Utilities, very appropriately named, and then click on Text File Viewer. Maybe if you're doing some Z scripting, you might want to quickly check on your file, but then why wouldn't you just have it open in something else to begin with? For real, you can't even navigate the document in a normal way. You have to page up and page down like you're viewing it through some old DOS viewer. And if you were wondering, which I don't think you were, no, you cannot edit this document. It is strictly for viewing text files and nothing else. But you can do it in ZBrush, which is kind of cool in a way, I guess. Really, I have no idea why this is here, but I find it pretty hilarious and definitely deserving of the top spot on this list. If you know of any other cool hidden tools or features within ZBrush, post them in the comments below. I love to geek out over this stuff. And if you guys enjoyed this video, check out this one where I sculpt the female character that was used in this video. Click that subscribe button if you're new here, and I'll see you in the next one.